today I'm inviting you into my bedroom because in the spirit of DIY everything, I want to create some art for my walls and I'm gonna show you how to do the same. My name is Shada Campbell. Welcome to my bedroom. <laughs> Come on in, have a look around. I recently found this mantle on Facebook Marketplace, installed it in the bedroom, and now I want to create a little artistic vignette on top. Chris and I bought our first home in the spring of this year, and we've been very slowly making it ours and fixing little things over the course of the summer. And one of the first spaces that we kind of put our own stamp on was our bedroom. So welcome to my bedroom. Uh, the whole house was sort of yellow custard and that's just not my style. So we've been slowly painting things white and choosing other colors. I am incredibly slow when it comes to home decor because not only do I want to paint all the walls, but I also want to redo all of the furniture myself. So my side tables are Ikea, but I of course had to paint them. And I installed this mantle behind me and painted it and made it over. And I'm constantly upcycling furniture that I find on Facebook Marketplace and at antique shops and yard sales and stuff like that. So I'm slow, but I have a lot of fun with it. And not only am I all about furniture, but I love placing art and I have kind of a formula for um, adding art to your home that I go by and I'll tell you a little bit about that. So when it comes to art for my home, first of all, I love clustering a bunch of art together. It kind of can tell a story as a collective, uh, whether it's a gallery wall or sort of a shelf situation like the mantle behind me. The first thing I start with is prints. Prints are simple and easy. You can go on Etsy, download digital prints, might cost you five or $10 per image, and then just have them printed at Staples or whatever print center is nearby. The second part of my formula is a little trickier. I like to find art at thrift stores. So I'll go to Value Village and search for a unique or interesting piece. Definitely antique malls and flea markets. You can find some really good stuff and often you'll come across something that really speaks to you. The third item in my art formula is to incorporate pieces, if you can, from other artists. If you're following someone online, consider buying one of their prints. It makes such a difference. And the fourth item in my formula is art that you make yourself. Of course, that's what it is, and that's what we're doing in today's video. We'll sort out the art for this mantle, and we'll make a piece of uh, original art uh, that you can follow along with and use in your own home. So let's head up to the studio and make some art. Now the frame that you saw on my mantle is 12 by 16 inches. So I've cut a piece of watercolor paper to the same size and I taped it to the table simply because it was curled up. So I need it to lie flat. Washi tape is good for that. And then I'm going to do a painting in a single color and I'm using Prussian blue watercolor paint, one glass of clean water. And it's quite a large painting. So I'm going to grab a larger round brush, something like a number 12 or 14 is perfect for this. And that's pretty much it for the supplies other than a bit of scrap paper and a pencil and maybe a pen to help you get the design kind of out of your head and onto uh, paper. So let's begin that design. We're going to do two circles, a large one and a smaller one, and then the smaller circle becomes the vase here at the bottom. This is such a simplistic design and it's actually based on a painting that I did uh, on YouTube a few weeks ago where I did this big burst of colorful flowers with this kind of tiny little vase below it, sort of a forced perspective. It's a fun way to approach florals. And for the painting for my bedroom, we're going to take the idea of simplifying flowers even further. Of course, one color, very simple. All the flowers are the same kind. They're just kind of these funny blob-like flowers where I'm giving them four or five petals, a little oval at the center, and a bunch of leaves framing everything. I'm almost, well, I am actually forcing myself to make the flowers messy, to make them look a little weird. I don't want the petals to be too equal in size. I don't want them to be rounded. I'm almost making them a bit squared off. I want everything to just look very, I don't know exactly, almost childlike, a little bit messy, I guess. 
I have a Matisse paper cut on the other side of my bedroom, a print, and I think I'm kind of basing it a little bit on that. I also think this very simplified style is really in sort of in the zeitgeist right now, and let me tell you, you'll be amazed. Simple art, it not only is it fun and easy to create, but you put it under glass and it looks so good and so professional. <laughs> so let's continue. I'm going to uh, put my drawing to the side, so that I can look at it as I transfer it over to the larger watercolor paper. I begin the same way with two circles, the large one and the smaller one that will become the vase. I'm just gonna erase and clean that up a little. Then I begin by placing circles or ovals more where I want each flower to sit. That allows me to see, do I have the right amount of flowers? Like I don't want to have 50 flowers in this large area. I want only a few very large, very simple flowers. Uh, start filling in all those circles with your messy, uh, unsymmetrical, childlike flowers. And once the flowers are in place, we can frame them uh, really beautifully with leaves. Another element of the sketch or doing the sketch ahead of time is that we're only working in a single color and we want things to be simple. And simple doesn't mean that it's straightforward necessarily. The tricky thing about a single color and a simple image is that we need there to be contrast. So in this case, I've made the decision to make all the leaves dark or blue and all the flowers white. For that reason, I want to frame the flowers with the dark blue leaves and they're really going to pop. Everything's going to be high contrast, but the forms, of course, are simple, clean and childlike, which is so beautiful. And it's going to look so great when we get it under glass. Now that the guide is done, the illustration is done, let's mix up our paint. I'm going to put a little Prussian blue on the palette and mix in lots of water. You want to mix in enough water that the paint flows beautifully and easily off your brush when you're painting, but not so much water that the blue is transparent. We're going for that high contrast look. You could be doing this with gouache or acrylics or a paint pen or even a marker. There isn't really anything overly watercolor-esque about this. And you'll see that as I get started here with the paint, I'm just filling in the leaves, just a nice dark blue. And then I'll begin to use the brush almost like a pen or marker and I'll draw or trace around uh, the perimeter of each flower and we're kind of drawing them in uh, again, like a child would. And I think that's so pretty. I encourage you to approach this just in the exact same way that I am, or you could choose your favorite flower, something like sunflowers or tulips would lend themselves really beautifully to this style of painting. You could go with any um, color, brown, black, or even like a nice hot pink or magenta, I think could look really beautiful. And depending on the room that you intend to place it in, um, there's a lot of ways you could approach this. You could do multiple colors as well. I think this would look very good with blue leaves and uh, white and orange flowers. What I really love about creating um, a somewhat simple piece like this is that it's fun to make it. It's not stressful. We're not doing anything too terribly complex. And I encourage you to not get lost in this painting because I know so many of us are gonna look at the work and think, oh, it doesn't look like Shada's or it doesn't look like I want it to. But trust me, it's meant to look a little weird. So if some of your flowers are a little off, I think that's what brings the magic. So allow yourself to really enjoy joy and relax into the process of making it, have fun with it, and then put it in a mat or just in a simple frame and it's going to look so nice. You'll be surprised. People are going to be like, ooh, where'd you buy that? <laughs> and that's what's so fun about a simple piece is it's easy to live with. It's fun to look at every day. You enjoy the process of making it and then it looks great hanging in your home. It doesn't... Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to look homemade unless you want it to, then that's a beautiful thing also. <laughs> anyway, I'm rambling. Friends, just a reminder that if you are struggling with watercolor or you just want to improve your skills, I do have a watercolor e-course. 
It's a multi-video course that takes you through everything, all the supplies, the basics, and of course we do watercolor florals. I'm mentioning it now because it's available on my website and when you purchase it, you have lifetime access. But I have another e-course that I will be releasing very soon, hopefully in November, and it is kind of building on the first one. We do a lot of watercolor flowers. It's more intermediate content, and I'm super excited uh, for you to get access to that. So check out the first one if you haven't already, and if you have, get excited for the new watercolor e-course that's coming up very, very soon. I am reaching the end of my painting here. I'm just tracing over the lines that make up the vase. I do like to kind of do a double line um, for the vase just to indicate that it's glass. I don't know, that's just something I often do and I think it kind of looks like glass. And then I'm going to paint in all the stems. You don't need to put um, too, too many. I find five or six is a good number. Maybe wiggle the brush just a little so those lines aren't too straight or too smooth and you get an organic look. And from here, you kind of just want to look at your image. It may differ from mine at this point, and that's a good thing. Look at it in a mirror. That's a good way to trick your brain and see, does it look a little unbalanced? Do I need another leaf over here? Or maybe you need to just add a little more blue in between some of the flowers. It doesn't need to look like a leaf necessarily. Sometimes you can just paint, you know, a darker color just to help these flowers um, you know, really pop off the page. So take a minute, maybe just go make a cup of tea, take a, a minute away from your painting, come back with fresh eyes and uh, add another leaf wherever you need a leaf. And that's it, we're all done. I'm gonna step away for an hour, let that dry completely. And the final steps are, we're gonna erase all of those remaining little pencil marks, clean the piece up when it is totally dry, you don't wanna make a smear, and then put it under glass or put it in a mat if your frame has a mat and hang it on your wall or place it on your shelf or mantle as the case may be and enjoy. And here's my bedroom finished up. I ended up placing my painting on the mantle alone. I'll put a nice bouquet beside it. I realized I had too much stuff up there. It was kind of dwarfing the mantle a little. I stacked some of my favorite prints in the corner. I love placing things just stacked against the wall. It's so boho. I put my little bunny print from North Prints on Etsy over on my wall shelf. And some of the pieces I had in here initially were transferred to other rooms. This is my real process. I figured it out slowly but surely and I just need to place a few other little things on that mantle. Maybe a lamp, maybe some dried florals. I don't know, comment below and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.